And honestly, at this point, I don't really care what it's considered. What happened was my surgeon and my medical personal information was revealed and it wasn't by my choice. Not only that, it wasn't just the surgeon. It was the fact that my weight loss clinic was technically what I considered doxxed online. Literally in Narc Alert's live stream, she literally said where I was going. Like she said my weight loss clinic's name. I felt super violated. I'm not going to lie because I don't want people knowing the address of anywhere that I am or could be going to. I feel like it's unsafe, especially for someone who is in the public eye. That information was personal and private to me. So I should be able to say like, okay, I want this information to be revealed versus not revealed. That was like purely my decision. And that was completely taken from me. I know for a hundred percent fact, if the roles were reversed and I did what Narc Alert did, there would be an outrage. So okay. Hi, everybody. This is Ray. It's Life and Vibe. How are you all doing today? And Put request, I have been asked to react to Amberlynn Reed. And so that's what we're going to do today. And if you do like this type of content, hit the subscribes. Make sure you leave a like, leave a comment. And as always, this is just for fair use. Obviously, it's all for entertainment purposes only. And, you know, Amberlynn doesn't use trigger warnings, but I think she probably should just because she is in this clip that we just showed talking about things to do with her weight. She often goes into issues about her mental health. She talks about the journey that she is struggling, I want to say, with over many, many years in trying to lose weight. Uh, she has mentioned she doesn't want to go the same way as a sadly deceased content creator known as uh, Life by Jen. And it is funny because Life by Jen had been watching Amberlynn read content. So just kind of a thought there. And my thoughts about the doxing issue because... People have asked me to weigh in on this since I am somebody who is a healthcare professional. I am a registered nurse here in the United States. I have over a decade, close to 15 years. <laughs> I always say, oh, uh, wild, wild uh, of experience. So my thoughts are that there should be a understanding, and I'm a reaction channel, that we should not really interfere I think, with the lives of others. The facility that is going to be doing the procedure for Amberlynn Reed have their protocols in place which would be able to ascertain as to whether Amberlynn Reed is an appropriate patient for this procedure really is not the job of complete outsiders who are neither family members related to her have anything other than wanting to have a monetary gain probably at the end of the day by revealing information that this person themselves has not revealed so i would take the side uh it is her information and yes she did start to share her weight loss journey but I think we should respect when people don't want to talk about every aspect of their lives. If she's sharing that part of her journey, then I think I would respect that. Now, whether that's the whole reason as to why she's not continued the weight loss surgery, that is not my place to say. I am just saying from a professional standpoint or even just a kind of a human being standpoint, there does need to be a line between where we as reaction channels can cross that blurs into the life of the creator we are reacting to. And I think you should not do that. I think that is not appropriate. That's, that's my opinion on that. Like I said, <laughs> I am not commenting whether I think she would go through with this journey. I know she has started and stopped many of these previously, 
that is not really what the point I'm making is. The sole point that I'm making is in regard to whether other creators should cross the line into the life of the person they're reacting to in their videos. And I would say, no, that's not appropriate. <laughs> Unless you think they're doing something that's illegal and you have solid evidence and you believe it should be notified to the police, then do it that way. Even before you make content, because everyone's trying to make content, everyone's trying to make some, some money. So we understand where that comes from. The good news is, Amberlynn, I can let you know if they were sending emails to your surgeon's office, unless that surgeon or somebody specifically reached out to you and said, hey, we're getting a ton of emails from this person talking about you, then I can promise you it's probably sitting in a junk mail folder or it is sitting somewhere not... <laughs> in a mess of, of, of emails that are unread. I have seen surgeons' emails that have contained over 20,000 unread emails in them <laughs> because surgeons are really busy people. And not to scare patients because we're talking about like business emails that might just be given out to the general public. The emails that would be sent if you were using an app that is through your healthcare company. And for example, there were two healthcare organizations in my area that I happen to also work for, but I was also a patient of. And they have like the little MyChart apps and you can go on and set up accounts with those. And they have, you know, high levels supposedly of security because you need all types of codes to open up the account and so forth. It will give you information about your labs. You can send direct messages to your physician. You can send other types of questions. And those will be responded to. But they are very privately sent. And they have people who are also monitoring those on behalf of the doctor's office. I also worked in triage and so have worked in outpatient facilities and can promise you just some random person sending emails to somebody, um, I don't think it would have a lot of power. Just just, just in my opinion. I think that uh, it would probably just be uh, absolutely ignored. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, uh, with that said, I've said a lot already. People have already said I talk too much. We're going to look at a different video from Amberlynn. We're going to look at actually her most recent. It is named Emergency vet visit, cook with me, and let's go to Target vlog. So I am going to share my screen with that one instead. And it's kind of funny because yesterday I myself had taken my own uh, Papa Doodle, June Bug, to the vets. And so I am very familiar <laughs> uh, with that. But mine was just a annual visit. We're just getting our vaccinations, getting just a double check. June Bug's doing good. She doesn't need to lose a couple of pounds. I am not going to lie. <laughs> um, and she needed her ear cleaned and she had a stinky gland that had to be extracted. And so I'm glad I was not the one doing that. I did not even realize, poor thing, but I'm glad we caught it and that she's getting seen early because those glands can actually become infected and become very painful. So it it was not cheap. Uh, I have a dog that weighs 66 pounds and needs to lose a couple. And so her medications, I mean, it was all over. I mean, it was almost $450 that was spent yesterday. And I only got one three-month tablet that she took for her flea and tick, and I still need to get more of those. But she got a year of her heartworm. Yeah, and I didn't even have to do rabies. So that just tells you. <laughs> but they didn't, they, I was just charged an officer. So I didn't get charged extra for the procedures that were done on Junebug. So it turned out all good. So I am curious to see what our friend Amberlynn has to say 
um, about her visit to the vet since we were just at the vet yesterday. And if you want to see more about Junebug, you can check her out at the shorts. Okay, I've talked too much. I've talked too much. All right, let's go. For an apple. <laughs> Okay, you guys, this girly pop. Oh, welcome to the vlog, though. Hi. Okay, this girly pop is hungry. And normally I have eggs and corned beef hash when I first wake up. But I want something on the lighter side because I am going out with my mom today. And I think we're going to go grab something to eat. And when I do that, I still want to stay low calories or near calories. Like, I'm not trying to make any mistakes around here. I'm just feeling really good. Can I ask questions about the corned beef hash and the eggs? My, my question is, would that not be considered two forms of protein? So I'm curious as to, is she on some type of keto diet? Is that what she's aiming for? Because I would start to become concerned with heart disease or any type of bowel disease. Uh, uh, especially it seems to be increasing in younger people. I'm fascinated to find out more as to the reasons why. It's obviously scary. I lost a family member to colon cancer at the age of 34. So very aware of these types of issues and uh, just want to know why eggs and corned beef hash. I looked at that breakfast. I don't think I would lose the corned beef hash. I think for Amberlynn, the corned beef hash, it's a tend, it's processed. I believe it's extremely high in sodium. And that would not be something I would want to recommend to her. I think just increasing any type of high levels of sodium would potentially put more work on her heart muscle. And she's already putting enough work on her heart muscle. I can promise you. All right, Amberlynn, let's keep going. So... We're going to keep it up, keep up the momentum, keep up the motivation, just oh. determination. Oh, and by the way, a lot of people. I wanted to say I would have added more roasted vegetables. I, you could even have other types of grains. I would just look to try to think of things outside of what we've seen as all traditional breakfasts over the years. Uh, she's got a thing for the eggs, but I would also try to encourage finding other sources of protein so your diet is more varied. Uh, you can use tofu and scramble that, and you can add nutritional yeast and other seasonings and flavorings very quickly and make it quite flavorsome. If you want to be quick, there are lots of very good pre-made salsas that are limited ingredients, meaning few ingredients in them that are fresh, have to be used fast. And they're already, you know, chopped with the chili and the tomatoes and the onion, a little bit of garlic. So it's ready to go. And you can add that into the tip. There's so many different things you can do. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking because people tell me to not talk. <laughs> but I also am here not only to react, but also to hopefully give some recommendations because it's fine for me to react, but as a registered nurse, as a healthcare provider, professional, I would want to encourage other options here because it's fine for me just to say, don't eat that, Anne Boleyn. But if I'm not actually making recommendations of what I could suggest, then I'm not benefiting anybody. You can also do slices of sweet potato and bake it in the oven. You don't have to add any oil to it. If you could just salt it and pepper it and let it bake that way. She's got the air fryer. She could be using that as a substitute for toast and a little bit of carb to hopefully keep her satiated. Well, I know everyone hates that word. Help keep her a little bit fuller feeling and still get really good nutrients, leave the skins on. There's so many different things that you can do. Uh, and still get that little bit of carbohydrate and starch. Because I wouldn't say going full keto unless you're being monitored by a physician and having your labs looked at is a good recommendation because you could be putting more work on your kidneys, on other organs that you're just not really considering when you enter into these sort of fad diets. 
were like, oh my God, that cardigan does not fit her. I purposely like it hanging over like that. I think it's cute. That's just me because it very much does fit. I just don't think that looks as good. But then we... <laughs> Sorry, I keep going on, but I did want to talk about the food. And I think going out and knowing that you could make bad choices and you are trying to take something, even if it's... I would rather her take some apple slices, a little bit of maybe... You can put peanut butter in a container. You don't have to buy it pre-packed. Just put a little bit of Tupperware. It's not the end of the world. And maybe take that on the go. A little tiny bit of peanut butter, like a tablespoon, maybe two at the most, because that's a lot of fats. And just use the apple slices. Get a good container. There's good ones now that really kind of keep out oxidation elements and can keep it a little less from browning. Because when people freak out about the browning, it's not the end of the world. But pick good apples, you know, that you like. Slice it up. Just take that moment. It really isn't long. I always take nuts with me. That's my go-to. We have, like, oh, why am I explaining myself? So I'm not really a yogurt girly pop. I do, like, frozen yogurt because that tastes like freaking ice cream. Let's be real. But I wanted to try this Oko's Triple Zero. It has 15 grams of protein. It's only 90 calories. It's in the flavor banana cream. So I'm excited to try it. Okay. Smells like yogurt. <laughs> of course it does. All right. I'm going to stir it until it looks. I mean, if you're not impressed with it, this is an opportunity to maybe add a little bit of fruit into this, like real fruit, not just dried cranberries because that can contain a lot of sugars because they have to sweeten it with juices because the cranberries themselves are very bitter. So those are all heavily sweetened with juices and sugars and so forth. So just chop up a little or some berries. The easiest thing, just get some blueberries, a little handful and, uh, you know, put it into a bowl. That's a very large container. I think you could have gotten two servings out of that at 15 grams um or you, i mean because that i i it says zero grams of fat i just i i'm always suspicious about these heavily processed yogurts um but still i would add fruit uh if you want to add a little just oatmeal just get regular whole oatmeal not the quick oats just the whole oats you don't have to cook it and instead of using mueslis because they often contain again sugars so if you want to add that little bit of carbohydrate, you can sprinkle a little bit of that on top. So there is a way to add other good items to this and, you know, without it becoming like a super over-caloried parfait too. So I would stick away from syruped fruits. I would stick up from bagged dry fruits. I would stick from away from those granolas and mueslis that are already sweetened, any candies that are put, all of that stuff is just then turning what could potentially be a not terrible thing for you into an absolute junk fest. And get real fruit, some real berries, and like I said, a little bit of like real whole oat oatmeal, if you are able to tolerate that, and sprinkle a little bit of that on. It's just, I think there's other things that can be done much healthier that you can just have on hand. You can put a little flax on it, ground flax, not the seeds, get ground. Good. You know what I'm saying? What I don't like about yogurt is like that weird sour taste. Like it's just not for me. And I just realized I need to go put on my rings before I leave. All right. So let's try it. Oh, she looks impressed. Oh, that's a no. Rarittles. She loves dairy products like yogurts, <laughs> ice creams. You can't have this, my beautiful baby. Uh, you know what would be good in this? Like just a couple mini chocolate uh, like chips or you know what I'm talking about. Like little tiny thingies and like a chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. Exactly all the things I said not to do. That's where her taste buds take her. You see, because there's all these pre-made things where they do that instead of actually getting like the sweetness of a good berry. 
you know, you got to find some good raspberries. Don't get a blackberry. Get like a raspberry or a good blueberry, something that's a sweet berry. Strawberries. You could slice up strawberries and add it to it. It's not anything that's hard. Kills me when I hear people want to suddenly put chocolate chips. That's suddenly like, why are you making it into a dessert? And it's just, no, that's garbage. <laughs> Where she was, go girl. <laughs> I don't like it. If you like yogurt and you like banana cream, you'll like this. But if you don't, then you're not gonna like it. So currently in Target, look how cute. I love that. Ah. <laughs> uh. uh. I don't think they're made for your head size. No. No. No, no, no. Hats are not for me. At all. Yeah, I would agree. Well, I don't think it's hats. I think it's just that those specific hats are not your head size. I think if you were to wear a hat, that actual style of the larger floppy hat, would be much more appropriate and would look actually quite good. But you would need to have one that was sized for you because the difficulty is, is that being in your larger body, Amberlynn, the hats were probably not made or designed to go and balance somebody in a larger body as well. So probably going into a retailer uh like lane brian or somebody torrid <laughs> that is actually aiming more we probably have hats more sized appropriately in my mind but it's not that you don't look good in the hat don't get me wrong i actually thought the floppy hat might look kind of you know retro cute on you you might look like mama cass a little bit I'm currently trying to see if this necklace will even fit around my fat neck. Uh oh. I do like it to be shorter though, so. It will. Okay, you guys. So these are all the journals that I have. Oh. And I'm about to complete one. So it is time. That is wild. For somebody who doesn't seemingly travel or do a lot, she's got a lot of journaling to do. To choose another ASMR. No. So I have done this before with you guys, but this is how I usually choose my journal when I'm just doing it by myself. So I like to vlog it too, because it's fun. So it's kind of like process of elimination here. So I'm going to get rid of the one that I don't want to use next. And then... Um. Amberlynn, I, I, I think you, aren't you like 30? I mean, I get it. They're cute. They're cute. I would also be probably wandering around at TJ Maxx because they look like that's where you would find these particular two. Maybe the one on the right on Target. The one on the left looks like something I'd find at TJ Maxx, surprisingly. Um, yeah, it just seems very youthful. Mine are black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, my journal just says write or something on the front in brown. And I don't often write in it. I think the last, I think like every couple of years I remember to write in it. <laughs> and I'm going to keep the one that I do want to use. And the process will go on until I have one left. These are so aesthetic together. Love. Like, tell me that isn't the cutest little setup. I bought this one like years ago. And uh, this is one of my newer ones. Uh, one out. I'm not understanding the. Hold on. Am I. <laughs> I don't know. Am I understanding how she's choosing? Is it just like, is it a feeling? She says she's choosing and this is how she chooses. I get, does she just put them all out until, okay, I guess I missed something. <laughs> all right, girl, you keep living your truth.
I'm confused. Like All right, it looks like this one won. I've had this one forever. It just says be brilliant. This is how it looks on the inside. I'm so excited to start this new journal. Okay, guys, so I'm... I want to say that I actually had the cousin or sister or whatever to that journal many years ago in a sort of sea, like a Caroline. No, it was a lighter East Coast blue, as I would call it. And it said something else, like dream or something. I don't know, but that's funny. So, yeah, that's an old journal, girl, because I've journaled more extensively. But in the last few years, it's it's come less and less consistent. Worried about Twinkie. Lean. So <laughs> I'm actually about to take her to the emergency vet. Uh -oh. So last night I noticed she didn't want to eat her food. She barely wanted a treat. She's acting lethargic. Mm. Like even minus all that, I can tell when something's wrong with her. Usually it's because she has really bad joints because she is... A very small dog she is older so she takes medicine for it so usually when that happens it's just like instead of her doing everything by herself i'll like literally carry her and i just baby her more than usual but i noticed oh it's well amberlyn i am so happy to hear that you are being more responsive to your animals when they are needing veterinary care because like chantelle i understand miss foodie beauty I understand that you can be slightly neglectful when it comes to getting care for your pets. So I hope she is getting annual checkups and that she is getting regular veterinary care. I know it's expensive and I know that maybe because you don't drive, it's difficult, but I think that's a good time that now you have family, you have maybe mom to help you get her more regularly to the vets. Or maybe you find where there's an Uber that allows a dog in the car. I think you need to make sure that you always have a plan. I have a dog that does not get into a car. I have a vet that's within walking distance. Fortunately, it's a very good vet. But I am going to be getting a correct size muzzle. And I'm just going to be picking her up now and putting her in the car. So we can go to other places too. It's actually not her joints this time. She's not limping. She's not like having her typical symptoms. So what I do is I gently touch all over her body. I look around her body. A vet actually told me to do this years ago. That if you notice something's wrong with your dog, sometimes there is like a painful something on them. So if you gently, I mean gently, just like feel around them, pet them. So that's what I was doing. doing. Me and Twinkie were just like cuddling. And it was like nothing on her body. Like she was fine, but I could tell something was wrong. So then I looked more like in depth on her face. So like under her mouth, there's like a lot of swelling. And I'm like, that's not normal. But it's like in a way that you can only see it. Amberlynn, usually the first sign I would have thought was the dog not wanting to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're feeling around for things, being like a vet, <laughs> but I think it. I think they were trying to potentially to see if there was a joint that was more sore on the animal. I would think that, though, it is alarming if your animal is suddenly not eating. I mean, one day, one time, that can happen with little dogs. I'd have a little dog that occasionally she just didn't want to eat, you know, but if it's lingered for a day or two, then yeah, that's a problem. But if it's only been a day, I understand. It's not the end of the world with a little dog. I get it. So I understand. It's not always like run to the vet, you know, because I had it with my little dog. Yeah, if you're like looking at it from like it should be fine. under, when I notice that, you know, my first response is to, okay, baby girl, let me gently and calmly open your mouth. Like she didn't want me anywhere near it. So this could be anything, a tooth problem but it could be a jaw problem. My brain goes to like, is it a tumor? That's just where my brain is going. So I'm gonna take her to the emergency vet. I'm very nervous. She is my heart and soul. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And my mom's actually gonna take me. So I appreciate her so freaking much. I don't know. Well, I mean, if you'd notice blood or something, I'd say an emergency vet. 
I would otherwise just try to get an appointment with a, a, a vet locally, unless the part of her not eating has been more than just one time she hasn't want to eat, was hasn't wanted to eat. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm glad you're taking care of Twinkie because I know you've received backlash for your poor pet care in the past. So good on you, Amberlynn. There's been some money on this poor animal. She looks old. Poor thing. It's okay, baby. Oh, it's okay. Oh, I understand. Okay, guys. So as soon as they saw Twinkie, they said, I think it's an abscess. Oh. So the vet gave me the option to sedate her. And so they can do like a more thorough look just to make sure it's not something worse or whatever. So they gave me that option and I said, uh, yeah, please. <laughs> so here's Twinkie after being sedated. This was in the back of my mom's car. And Amberlynn has been educated by the YouTube community that she makes more than enough money and has enough access to resources that she has no excuses to neglect her pets there are no excuses if her pets are not being cared for that is because amber lynn as a pet provider is not pro owner too is not giving it to them she's not giving it to them because she's just being too lazy because she's got everything else it's not a matter of money it's not a matter of she's working all the time that she doesn't have time she makes content from her vet visits there are no excuses this is where amber lynn though she is still extremely problematic is slightly better is much better i guess than foodie beauty because foodie is going to do nothing for poor julia as we ask for her to please take care of that cat, to please brush her, to please lot, let her hair get matted. This is very different from Amber Lynn, who was really persecuted and is now seemingly being a, a somewhat better pet parent. So keep it up, Amber Lynn. Don't let it, don't let it wane. She was out of it, you guys, that poor little baby. But the outcome is she has an abscess and she might have to get her tooth surgically removed. And that just breaks my heart for her. Like she was so out of it. Look at her. Aww. Now she's on antibiotics and a painkiller. And she's just my little baby. And I just feel absolutely horrible for her. But it is two days into the future. So hello. She is doing so much better. The swelling is down and she's acting like herself again. She's not acting like she's in pain. She's happy again. So tomorrow, which is Monday, I will be calling to make an appointment to get her teeth either surgically cleaned or she might have to have it removed, which is very, very sad. All right, girl, just get the teeth, the teeth. Okay. I had a little dog and I am surprised that she's this age and has never had to have her teeth cleaned. I had a little tiny Pomeranian that, bless her heart, it was almost every year. It was pretty much every other year uh, over her lifetime. And some years it was every year, depending. It just seemed, you know, I, I would just keep an eye on it. Her getting surgically put under and having her teeth cleaned because she was so prone to dental plaques. I gave her no table scraps. I didn't really give her a lot. I gave her no human food, really. I did. She did not like me brushing her teeth. That was a problem. As much as I tried to get in there, I finally got like the little soft dental sponges that we would use on the hospital floor with patients. And I have been using those with my dogs now because I can just put the toothpaste on, soften it with a little bit of water, put the toothpaste on. And then after I've used the sponge, I just dispose of them and get rid of it. I don't think, because a lot of times with those little dogs too, their gums are very sensitive. So the idea of just getting any type of bristle or anything in there that would be harsh was not something I wanted to exacerbate. So they, I find you can go on Amazon and just get a big old box of gentle 
just like the little, little tiny sponges. I use them now with my girl, Junebug. She's very good about letting me brush her teeth. Um, but little dogs, yeah, you're going to invest on having their teeth cleaned pretty frequently. <laughs> when she said abscess, I was like, oh, tooth. Girl, that's something. Just get the dog put under, get the teeth cleaned, and make sure that they check because there potentially could be other teeth that need to be removed. So you're better just going in there and getting her teeth. Just get it done, girl. Just get her taken care of, okay? Otherwise, just like humans, those types of plaque issues and dental issues can cause dogs to have cardiac problems just as much as they can cause people to have heart problems. So just think about that, Amberlynn. All right, I'm talking a lot on this one. It's a lot to say. So it is the next day after I just filmed that voiceover. Twinkie's doing so much better. Aww. Hi, baby girl. Yeah, she's just resting right now because we just came back inside from going for a walk. Um, I had someone contact me today on Instagram saying, like, are you okay? I heard there's tornadoes in Oklahoma right now. And I'm just like, um, I didn't know that there was, and now I'm scared. It was sprinkling a little bit when we went out there, but I mean, the weather's fine, but Oklahoma is known for the tornadoes, so I'm a little scared. I also want to give an update on my little like weight loss challenge. As you guys know, I wanted to reach 450, which would be another 50 pounds lost, and I just kind of wanted to count see how long it took me so today is day seven and i weighed in at 493.6 so i'm going i'm trucking along i have not gone over my calories in a week which is so crazy for me because like i am not really that girly pop lately like i haven't successfully counted calories like in a hot minute to be honest i just really want to be aware of what i'm putting in my mouth because if i didn't do that it's like a few hundred calories here, a couple hundred calories there. Like it all adds up in the end. And I, I, I'm going to sort of burst Amberlynn's bubbles, I guess. And yes, how many calories you are intaking is important to know. I think what should be more her goal is to eat more real food. I've seen way too much processed, packeted, salty just foods that i think at the uh, sodas electrolyte you know those terrible gatorade drinks i mean just i think a whole plethora of items that would not be benefiting to her i think that if she focused more on trying to find ways to eat more whole foods in her diet and eliminated as much processed food from her diet rather than focus on the calories she would find that actually the calories would probably take care of themselves and she would start to lose weight and stay very healthy at the same time and start to probably potentially replace nutrients her body has been deficient of from having such a terrible diet over a period of time just a thought I don't show progress when I allow myself to have those extra calories here and there and there and there. So it's just really good to stay on. That's because your go-to on a yogurt girl is chocolate chips and not some fruit, a little handful of fruit or a little handful of, you know, uncooked oatmeal. Whole, not quick. That, see, that's the difference. See, that would be my go-to. It's like a little bit of fruit, maybe an apple slice, some, a, little, a little smidge of peanut butter because I know how heavy that is on the calories not chocolate chips. So that, I think you need to sort of consider that as part of the reason why you fail. You need to get rid of all the processed nonsense out of that house. It all needs to go. All of it. I mean, you have time to, to, to roast vegetables in an oven and do actual cooking. And, and you spend more time probably trying to decide what journal to write in. What are you writing about? under my goal i'm actually about to go make lunch right now so let's go do that oh yeah okay. okay so i'm about to put some salmon okay all right i'll live with that air fryer i just seasoned it with some garlic fryer. salt and i don't know about fish in an air fryer i mean salmon is a fatty fish so we'll see if it comes out looking dry to me i always think and it doesn't have the house smell fishy 
if you buy a steamer for the microwave, you can buy them at Walmart. It puts a little bit of water at the bottom. You just put the fish on the top. You can put a little salt, pepper, whatever seasoning on the top of the fish and steam it in the microwave for three to four minutes. And it actually, you know, that steaming maintains some of the moisture, which I think with a fish is much better than if you're going to dry it out in an air fryer. I just think air fried fish does not sound very appetizing. And it just in my mind. And a little bit of pepper. I'm also having Caesar salad. So it is a salad kit, mm. which this is delicious. There is three servings in it. So for the salmon and for the salad, it is kind of high calorie. It's 700 calories, but it's going to keep me full for a while. Okay, so while... And see, this is Anne Berlin. Salad, lid, salad, salad, Lynn kit girl. You know, she is... <laughs> sorry, that was not coming out the way I hoped it to. I would think you can make a... You do not need a, a creamy Caesar dressing, girl. That is however many calories just think where the calories are coming from if it's coming from ultra processed food and i know those salad kits are very handy i understand but it's so easy to make little salad dressings from oil and salt and pepper and again you can shake it up and even keep it in the fridge for a day or two put a little garlic in it put a little balsamic vinegar in it they're olive oil salt pepper shake it up you got an oil you got a dressing and it's fresh it's homemade it's not heavily sodiumed you have control it's not this processed you know whatever i always see see on that sunflower oil process propelled or whatever it is just all that stuff all the salmon is cooking which is almost done I'm going to make the salad. So in total for this whole meal, it is $7.70. So first we have obviously the lettuce. Oh, and the crouton. And then we have the Caesar dressing. I'm going to use these tongs. Amberlynn is not somebody who needs to be doing creamy dressings. Plain, 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 flat and flat, out. I don't care how she's dividing out these calories. And it's this processed stuff again. So you took a perfectly good lettuce and you just annihilated it. I had some lettuce today. I don't think I put anything on it. I just like the flavor of the lettuce. Next we have some Parmesan cheese. Oh gosh. That stuff is like the end of the rind. And then instead of croutons, they give like crouton crumbles, which I... Sorry, I meant to pause. That That is like not even a good Parmesan cheese. Any Italian will tell you that. That's like the, the rind that's been shredded. Process. So, I mean, I don't even know if that thing is seen. And then she's going to put the, the, the packet croutons. Croutons, whatever. You can make croutons yourself from some terrible bread, girl. I just... This this is this is where your diet is messed up. I understand it looks good, but now you've got this air fried salmon and a processed salad packet. They, I I I know they look tempting. They aren't as healthy as we think, guys. Okay, it's not better than the crack you get in the restaurant. I think I prefer, if I'm being honest, especially oh. once this is all mixed together. Mm. I get it, but they're not good for you. And I do like to add some black pepper on top. Look how delicious that looks. Mm. Oh, she's about to eat the whole... How many portions, girl? And that fish dries anyway. All right, so here is my lunch. A salad and salmon. I do... That... No. I, no. I, I'm calling a no. One, that fish looked dry. Okay, I come from a seaside town here in the States. And like I said, you'd be better doing the, the microwave steamer. You would have kept a lot more flavors and, and some of the healthy fats, I think, from the fish. and Kept some of the moisture. So at least the fish would be appetizing without any added oils or anything. 
Um, and I know you haven't done that with this in the air fryer, but I think fish in the air fryer is just dry. And then the salad, I understand these salads they uh, and the Caesar, but that's not a, a real Caesar salad made at the table. This is just, that's a very, it's the dressing and the croutons and the packeted. It's the packeted items that were added to that lettuce that are really the killers. You're better just getting some broccoli, girl. Steam that. <laughs> just keep away from the salad. Just steam some broccoli, okay? Just steam some broccoli. Don't kill it with butter. We have a lot of salad left, actually. All right, so here is my lunch. I'm actually pretty hungry right now. Show me those cream calories. Mm. This brand, I promise you, the best salad ever. All right, let's try. I mean, it's an attempt. Salmon. Okay. I do eat the middle first. Mm. I don't know why. It is cooked perfectly. Mm. 10 out of 10. <laughs> I mean, all right, you guys. So I'll give it to her for eating at least the salmon and not having killed it with stuff. The salad, though, it's a hard pass for me. You could have steamed some squashes, some broccoli, all fresh. Wouldn't have cost a lot of money. Probably less expensive than that bag salad. And you could have then use you can use a little squeeze of lemon, a little salt and pepper. If you want to kind of flavor to try to keep away from the butters, there's other ways to flavor the you um, vegetables that don't require just smothering things in butter, which is what we're used to doing. Because then you kind of take away some of the goodness of that food. Um, you can sprinkle a little balsamic vinegar often on it; can be very good too. Um, so anyway, all right, keep going. But I think, yeah, uh, not. You know, my feelings about the egg salad. Hello. It's ready. Stepping on. I figured I would record this one for you guys. 492.2 pounds. <gasps> 492.2. I'm almost in the 480. Now, I always have questions about these talking scales, and I don't want to be rude. And somebody who's in a larger body like Amber Lynn and what their weight maximum is because if you are close to what that weight maximum is it may not be accurately weighing you so i would be curious through a accurate weight at a doctor's office what her actual weight is because i'm always curious with these machines they may be better for people who are i hate to say lighter down the scale might be getting more accurate readings, but if you're close to what the maximum of that scale will take, it may not start to accurately read. It's one of those things, like, for example, if you have a machine that gives five liters of oxygen, in reality, you know you're probably not really going to get the five liters, true five liters out of that machine. To get the true five liters, you may end up having to have two five liter machines making five liters because you're getting two and a half from one and two and a half from the other. And you can really guarantee that they're giving you two and a half. So then you've got the five, which is one of the things that we often think about with home equipment, uh, with patients. So just a thought, Amberlynn, just a thought. But if it's helping you show at least a progress down, then I think in reality, the numbers don't matter. I can see that happening in the next like three to four days, and I'm super excited for that. I just realized that it's three, three, three o'clock. That is a good sign. If you guys know, you know. So we're currently in my bathroom because I need to clean out this. No. What is happening, Amberlynn? And it doesn't stop there. Mm. Wow. So yeah, I just I really need to clean this out. Like this is looking crazy. My mom took a shower here like two months ago, stay the night. So there's still some of her things in here. And I'm just like, bro, I have not cleaned this in forever. So it is time that I do so. Actually, recently got some new. Uh... I guess she left every container that she ever possessed in the last state she was residing in. <laughs> because she had so many containers and stuff, I want to say. Why didn't you take some of them with you? Were they just too many? See, this is this is 
until you move to a permanent residence that is your home, like you're paying a mortgage, I would suggest always keeping it light in the rental world. So it always surprises me to see somebody who is living in rental accommodation purchasing such large amounts of stuff uh, because you're going to have to take it or you're going to get rid of it. And then thinking about the amount of money you just spent, it didn't go to a home, didn't go to a retirement account. It didn't go to anything except buying stuff that at the end of the day, you didn't need and you certainly didn't even want it at the end of the day. And now you've got a drawer that looks like it needs organization containers in it, which you're going to probably go off and buy, knowing you, Amberlynn. Wild. Waste of money. Somebody needs to help you with accounting, but they probably swindle you out your money, girls, so just be cautious. Um, like gentle floss. So I'm excited to try this brand. Plus, you know what called out to me? The color of this bag. Something that has greatly helped my hair yeah. recently is oh, like Garnier Fruity Sleek and Shine Anti-Frizz Serum. Mm -hmm. Definitely recommend. Oh. If you guys have super dry skin, the Cetaphil uh, Moisturizing Cream. Now, I might be curious to try that product, the, the anti-frizz, because it's getting up to the humidity season soon in my town. And I know that uh, the frizz can get wild. So, And I have tried some of their products in the past and have been very happy with them. So mm, that might be actually a nice recommendation there, Amberlynn. <laughs> I like that. Keep going. I'm very to dry to dry sensitive skin. Also recommend this. So I usually use dry shampoo, but I actually stopped using it about two weeks ago. So I'm going to throw this away. So I have a bunch of these little oh my God. Uh, sampler like perfumes. I know I have some like Louis Vuitton up in here. A subscriber actually sent to me and I have them in this like Q-tip container. I just thought it was a cute idea. So I could just grab it like that. And I don't know. It's cute. I literally want to almost get rid of my straightener, so I'm not tempted. I've actually had this straightener for easily a decade. So I got the top. I'm going to talk to you girl to girl. You need a haircut. Your hair looks scraggly and straggly and all that because you need a haircut. There are hairdressers that will come to your home. I have no idea why you have not found a hairdresser who will come to the home. They can, you can then wash your hair in your house, have your hair washed when they come after they, you know, or they can look at your hair while it's dry, do the consult with you. Mate, they can even whip up some colors, get some color. You need to add some color for some, you need to add color, girl, something, some, some highlights just to give it some, some, you know, something in there. Okay. Just giving you heads up. You can afford it. You might even find out if they're okay with you filming it. Could be fun. Would be less stressful than you trying to go to a hairdresser and find a sink and chair and everything that you're concerned about. Just have the hairdresser come to the house. No, it's not It's not product anymore, girl. It's literally dead ends. You need a hair, good, you need a good haircut, okay? If you don't get a good haircut, that hair gonna look bad. Best way to grow out long hair, you have to keep it trimmed. Get a hairdresser come to the house. That's it. No excuses now. All right? I want to see a better haircut next time. Top one all cleared out. And then I'll go on the Figure it out. And realized one of my bath and body works leaked a lot. All right, you guys. So the bottom first. Still looks a little cluttered, but it looks a lot better, actually. And then this one is just like amazing now. I just have a very bad habit of keeping everything clean. But then when you open a drawer, it's like, whoa, that's a mess. So if I was to use my Sweetheart Cherry body spray, instead of putting it back where it belongs, I would just go. And then if you do that with everything, eventually it starts to look very messy. All right, you guys, I just rinsed some fresh green beans. I, I do love canned green beans, I'm not going to lie, but I wanted to make some, like, Asian-inspired green beans. So I'm about to do that, season these, cook these down real good. I'm probably going to have some rice and some salmon as well. Okay, so I added soy sauce, minced garlic, sriracha, some pepper, and right now um, it's just in some water. Yes. 
because I am counting calories. I do want to cook these down like a lot. Like I want them to be skinny, shriveled, flimsy. Like that's my goal. So once I get there, if I need any oil, then I'll add some. But as of right now, like using water for this is totally fine. All right, you guys. So it is finished. I did add some sesame seeds to the top of cool girl. green beans. They came out exactly how I wanted them to. Amberlynn, you may want to find, I mean, I'm so glad you like that salmon girl, but you may want to find a different type of uh, protein just to, just to give you some variation. Um, you can always use tofu. I can think that you can use some types. Sometimes you can do beans, so you can do black bean burgers. You can obviously do chicken. I know that's for you. Um, there are other types of turkeys, I guess. Just try to keep away from processed. If you eat enough vegetables, that can eat to enough you know proteins as well it's different types of proteins but i know i eat often will have a lot of grains and pulses and nuts and seeds along with pastas and all sorts of things but uh i mean this isn't terrible but she ate fish twice in a day uh at least the portion of the rice Maybe still I would recommend getting it down to about a third of a cup. And that looks about half a cup. So that rice, surprisingly, might still be too large of a portion. Um, I would, I, I think you still get that rice down. Go a little bit bigger on the beans than maybe. Or add in some other low starch uh, vegetables over there. Maybe some cucumber slices. Um, some other things of that nature that are, you know, non-starchy type things. Um, and then, you know, if you want to kiss it with a fish girl. But, I mean, looks a hell of a lot better than what foodie's been eating, girl. So, good for you, Amberlynn. Keep it up. I know it's hard, but you're making progress. And this is what most people do, okay, is they cook at home. That's what we've been doing forever. People have been getting spoiled. And then, of course, my typical salmon that I love making in the air fryer. And then that is some rice that I cooked in my rice cooker. All right. Well, thank you, Amberlynn. I don't think that was the worst, actually. <laughs> okay. So, oh, my goodness. I made a very long video here. So I'm going to wrap this up. All right, guys, if you do like this type of content, I'm sorry, I, I talked, I had a lot to say. I hadn't really ever reacted to Amber Lynn. And I feel like she needs some guidance sometimes. I'm like her mom's age, but I would be helping her get a little bit more organized, hopefully with stuff. And I'm glad Twinkie's doing good. Get Tink Twinkie's teeth clean. Just go ahead and do it. Get the teeth cleaned and ask them to look for any other teeth that may need to be removed. It has to be done with little dogs. And don't give them table food, girl. All right. Well, best of luck for Twinkie. All right. Well, if you did like this type of content, do hit the her likes. Leave me a picture of a piece of fish. Leave me a fish for all the fish that Amberlynn has been eating today, guys. All right. We'll see you next time. Thank you for recommending Amberlynn. I've got somebody else I'm thinking of doing soon. So bye.